Seguli Swagwek. Hello everyone, welcome to Ungwakwa, our foods. Today we're going to show you how to make fresh hull corn using our white corn. Some people call this hominy. This way of preparing corn is the first step in making many traditional dishes, especially our soups. We hope to have more on how to use this corn in recipes in future videos. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on notifications for new uploads. I'm going to make fresh hull corn using the following items. Measuring cups, large cooking spoons with holes, six quart stock pot, large cooking bowl, three and a half quarts of cold water for the first step of hulling, which equals about 12 cups, three and a half quarts of cold water for the second step of cooking, which equals 12 cups, one and a half cups of sifted hardwood ashes, a corn washing basket or a stainless steel colander. I'll be using both to demonstrate each and one and a half pounds of raw corn, which equals about four cups. This will yield three pounds of fresh hull corn, which equals about eight cups. This is a typical amount for a crock pot of corn soup. Some people use more corn, some people use less corn, and crock pots come in all different sizes. To get started, I put three and a half quarts of cold water into the stock pot. Then I put the pot on the stove and get it boiling. When the water is about to boil, put a cup and a half of ashes in the water and stir them up. When the water gets to a good rolling boil, pour the corn in and stir. You will notice a brilliant flash of fluorescent orange. This is a chemical reaction between the ashes and the corn. The ashes are starting to dissolve the hulls of the corn kernels. This process is called nixtamalization. Using hardwood ashes to hull corn makes niacin in the corn available for our bodies to absorb. It also kills any mold that may be left on the corn from when it was growing in the field or drying in the barn. After about 10 minutes, start testing the corn to see if the hulls are coming off. To do this, scoop out a few kernels of corn, run them under cold water, and rub a kernel of corn. If the hull starts to slip off, the corn is ready for us to wash. If the hull is staying in place, the corn needs to cook a little longer. When the hulls start to come off, take the stock pot off the stove. It's now time to wash the corn. I take a few scoops of corn out of the pot and put them in the basket. Then I run a little bit of cold water into the basket over the corn to cool her off a bit. Then I rub the corn up along the sides of the basket to remove the hulls. When the corn stops feeling slimy, the hulls are off. Take the washed corn out of the basket, empty it into a cooking bowl, and add some more unwashed corn to the basket. Repeat this process until all of your corn is washed. I use the same process for washing corn in the colander. When the corn is all washed, I take the pot of ash water, stir it up, and dump it outside. You might need some extra water to rinse the ashes out. These ashes can be harmful to the plumbing in your house. If you have a compost pile, you can dump the ash water over it. The ashes can be a great fertilizer and have lots of nutrients that help our foods grow. Wash out the stock pot and put in three and a half quarts of cold water into it. Put the washed corn into the pot, bring it to a slow rolling boil. Cook the corn for about an hour until the corn is done. To tell if the corn is done, I take a couple kernels out, rinse them off and taste them. I think of pasta when I test the corn. Some people like their pasta al dente and others like it cooked a little longer. When the corn is cooked, take the stock pot off the stove. It's now time to wash the corn again. I use the same process as before, except this time it is much faster. When all of your corn is washed, you're done. The old timers say if you leave the eyes on the corn that you're a lazy cook. I generally don't take the time to get all the eyes off. I wouldn't mind if the older generations called me a lazy cook. I just hope they'd be happy we're starting to grow, harvest, and prepare more of our indigenous foods. We are still learning about our foods. People have different ways of preparing and processing our foods. 
we are sharing the way we learned how. One of the most amazing parts about this journey to get to know our foods better is that it is connecting us to so many people throughout the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and throughout Indian country that are thinking up new ways to enjoy our traditional foods. There are also countless recipes in the journals of the early explorers, in anthropological studies, in our WPA stories, and in Grandma's Pantry. If you have any you want to share, please feel free to drop them in the comments or send us an email.